when it comes to any particular process, the very first thing what we start with is the planning for that particular activity and the process. As a part of planning, we determine that what exactly we will be doing, how we will be doing, when the things will happen and who will be responsible for that. But a lot of things does happen which is unplanned. Now, what do you mean by unplanned? That any uncertainty which may happen as a part of your process and how well are you ready for that is what we will be understanding today and discussing this home in more detail in this particular tutorial. So we will be talking about this particular topic that is risk. What exactly a risk is? How do you determine the level of risk? What is the risk analysis process and how important risk analysis can be in your project? So let's get started with the same today. Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Dinesh Kumar Singh and today we are talking about risk. Now here we are just talking about the word risk, not exactly the risk based testing, which we will get into the details later. But yes, let's understand what exactly a risk is. When you talk about any particular process where you have planned for a lot many activities, schedule, people, roles and responsibility and everything is in place. But there are obviously many such other things which does happen unexpectedly or unwantedly. You never want them to happen. An unforeseen situation, any uncertainty which is not required to happen or maybe leaving an impact or could be a negative impact as well, which might be with the reputation of the organization, the product failure into the market, or maybe sometimes not delivering the product on time to the market. So it's very important for us to understand that what exactly this risk is. So we generally define a risk as an unforeseen situation or an uncertainty which may or may not happen, right? It's not mandatory all the time that it happens. And if it happens, it leaves a, a negative impact. All right, so that is what we understand from the definition of the risk. The second thing, very important, when you identify a risk, what is that you do with it? What if like you are capable enough, you have got a very good experience with the project working and you know that these are the typical things which generally happen. So what is that you do when you identify certain risk areas? So we do risk assessment. But risk assessment is generally to determine the level of the risk. What do you mean by level of risk? It is just to determine the severity and likelihood, which in other terms is also said as the, uh, the level of risk is determined by the impact and the likelihood. Well, impact means that what exactly will be the impact of this risk if it happens, the harm to the process or to the people or to the product, anything, right? And likelihood stands for that what is the probability of this risk to happen? So for a quick example, what if we are taking about a functionality called as reset password on a particular social media account or maybe Gmail account? Anyway, so you have an option wherever you can always go to that option and uh, you can click on that button reset password and you can change your password by providing your old password and new password. What if this link is not working? So let's consider this as one of the risks. That if this risk happens, a user will not be able to change the password. Now, the impact is very high because a user will not be able to change the password, which is very important functionality of a page. What if somebody knows his password and he wants to change his password after some time? So in that point, this uh, impact of this particular risk will be very high. The user will not be able to change the password. But what is the likelihood of this? Very low. Likelihood means the probability of this to happen. How frequently do we visit that option? Probably like at least 80% of us, we do not go to this option until unless asked by the tool itself. The tool reminds you that it's time you should change. And not only all the tools, again, only banking tools, like banking applications will remind you it's time you should change your password. So yes, if you are not prompted, you don't change. So it's very low likelihood. If this risk is associated with the reset password functionality, it is having a high impact but low likelihood because the probability of this event to happen is very low. The probability depends on frequency of use, right? So that's about the level of risk. But is that all we have got in risk? No. 
Risk analysis is another term. Where risk analysis is a process of dealing with risk-based testing, where we analyze all the risk areas from different aspects in a particular project. And not only project, we do have risk associated with the product. So risks are basically of two types, project risk and product risk. The project risks are any such risk which impacts the process of making a product. For example, related to your documentations, the availability of the environment, the uh, communication between the teams or personal issues or if you talk about the tools like the tool which you used is no longer supporting you or maybe the poor response from the vendor which you are coordinating with for some of your activities so any such thing as a part of your process is getting impacted you call it as a project risk so these are the examples which I just gave you for the project risk similarly we do have risk associated to product and the other type of risk is product risk. The product risk is completely related to the end user's impact. Or you can say the quality characteristics of an application. Now the examples are performance issues. Like your application does not sustain if 100 or more people log in at the same time. Or your application is not secure. Your application is not user friendly. Or in fact, you know, take a real time examples of certain equipments like blood pressure monitor machine shows a wrong reading, a weighing machine showing a wrong reading. So these are not calibrated well. So people may reject your product into the market. And this is called as product risk. What if a BP monitor is showing a wrong reading? You may get a hard impact, right? Maybe somebody can get a heart attack because of looking at high BP, right? So these are the things which we need to take care of and identify them and handle them as a part of test cases. So now let's understand the risk analysis in a very small and simple way. Risk analysis is a four stage process. Risk identification, risk assessment, risk mitigation and risk management. Risk identification is all about identifying the risk, which happens by brainstorming, intuitions, past experience, knowledge about the product, typical challenges which we have faced earlier, all these will help you to identify the defects in your area of project risk and product risk. The second part is risk assessment, which is to determine the level of risk, the impact and the likelihood. Now, when you know everything about this, the next phase is about risk mitigation. That how will you mitigate it? Now, mitigation again deals with two different parts of it. Like first is prevention and second is cure, because it's just like a disease. If you can prevent it, you can save a lot of money. And if you still could not prevent it, like a pandemic, then you can still take actions to cure it. Like how far you can cure it and overcome that deviation. Because if it still continues to happen, it might be a product failure in the market as well, which might cost you a lot. So that's where these are the stages. Now, what do you mean by risk mitigation? How exactly can you do that? That is with help of putting your test effort. You write more test cases, you prioritize your test cases, you execute detailed test cases for the risk associated functionalities. And you try to see that if the identified risk, the predicted risk is happening or not. If it is happening, good, you can curb it, you can fix it. If it doesn't happen, it is also an area of interest. That residual risk, when will you capture this? How will you try to overcome this? When will you do that? Probably in the next version. But yes, you do not ignore them. You do not ignore them because this risk may impact you in upcoming future cycles. So you do make a note of that and keep it into consideration that in the previous version, we could not resolve these issues. So now we know what exactly is risk analysis process. What is a risk based testing? So if you apply a risk analysis in your testing, you call it as risk based testing. And that's one of the approaches as well, or can be called as a test strategy for a lot of our projects. And we call it as analytical approach, which is also known as risk-based testing. So today we have understood what exactly is risk identification, risk assessment, risk mitigation, and risk management, where risk management is all about managing the overall planning of the risk. That what you identify, is it happening or not? If it is happening, is my team into action to overcome that or not? Right. So that's put together is called as a risk analysis process or risk based testing.
So today we have understood a lot about basics of risk and testing. And you hope you got a good examples of project risk and product risk as well. We will be getting into the details maybe sometime later, but that's all from this particular episode of Testing in Nutshell. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to answer your queries well. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.